ES Audio. Hi, I'm Rochelle Travers, and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, a plasma breakthrough could let humans live on Mars. But first, Tech and Science Daily has been finding out the secrets to the visual effects used in Jordan Peele's new UFO film, Nope. There's something out here. What did you see? It's a horror sci-fi thriller about two siblings that live on a ranch in California who try to capture footage of a UFO in the sky. One of the first things Jordan and I discussed was always just like, well, if we do our job well, the audience will look at the sky differently after they've seen the movie. That's visual effects supervisor Guillaume Rocheron from the moving picture company who provides the visual effects and animation for major Hollywood blockbusters. He and his team worked alongside Jordan Peele and has been explaining how they made the film both scary and immersive. He told us they invented a new technique to film night scenes in the day using a normal camera and an infrared camera, then combining the footage. When you film with an infrared camera, the sky, for example, during the day is completely black and the contrast that you see are very much kind of like the way you see at night. You want the audience to see it and be like, wow, you know, I'm seeing at night. Hopefully, you know, the story and the horror and the suspense comes across much more intensely in a way. Guillaume said a lot of work also went into making the sky. He admitted just three shots in the whole movie were footage of the actual thing. The best compliment for me is that when someone watches the movie and doesn't realize that you're watching visual effects pretty much for the whole film. <laughs> if you don't notice that, you know, everything else around, you know, the skies and the night scenes, and, you know, the things that really immerse you in the horror, I think that means that we've been successful. Nope is in cinemas now. A plasma breakthrough could let humans live on Mars. Well, according to the scientists who made it at least. Plasma is the fourth natural state of matter. It contains free charged particles such as electrons and ions which can be used to help make oxygen. Scientists hope the new findings can help build a system that would help support life in the hostile conditions on the red planet. The research called Plasmas for In-Situ Resource Utilization on Mars, Fuels, Life Support and Agriculture is published today in the Journal of Applied Physics. So I guess we'll see if the rest of the scientific community agrees. American Airlines is going big on supersonic travel. The world's largest airline has placed a non-refundable deposit for 20 Overture supersonic aircraft from manufacturer Boom Supersonic. The fleet of aircrafts could potentially carry passengers from London to New York in just three hours. Boom plans to complete its final design of the Overture aircraft by 2025 and is aiming for the first passenger flights to take place in 2029. The National Grid is managing new supply and complex demands as the UK looks to transition to more greener energy. For example, there's a greater demand from hydrogen, electric vehicle battery charging and offshore wind farms. Understanding the impact of all of those, coupled with um, uncertainty of supply because of um, what's happened in the Ukraine and Russian supply of gas, those things are some of the big issues um, that the that the world is grappling with and the, and the UK as well. That's David Wilson, CEO of Energy Exemplar, who have partnered with National Grid ESO to help them manage demand and supply cost-effective energy to Great Britain. Their software called Plexos will use advanced mathematical calculations and simulations to help plan energy scenarios in the future, allow more green energy through the grid and help energy get to hard to reach places. Plus, David explained how this project can help reduce energy bills as we push through our cost of living crisis. Enabling the rapid adoption and understanding where in the system can absorb new renewables, where certain investments will enable more renewables to be put into the system, overall reduces the the cost of energy uh, into the future and removes the exposure to the volatility that fossil fuels are bringing, particularly at the moment. Now, nine, three, eight, Two, seven, one, zero. NASA has rolled out its new giant moon rocket ready for its maiden flight. Known as the Space Launch System, the vehicle has taken to pad 39B at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida for a liftoff scheduled for the 29th of August. The first launch is a test with no crew, but future missions will send astronauts back to the lunar surface for the first time in over 50 years. Let's go to the ads. Whilst you're here, why not give us a rate and follow? Coming up, how magnets could be used to help astronauts breathe in space. And could Elon Musk be about to buy Manchester United?
Welcome back. Researchers found that magnets could be used to help astronauts breathe. The technique is looking at turning water into oxygen within a zero gravity space environment. The idea we had was using magnets basically to guide the oxygen and hydrogen gas bubbles out of the liquid. And the paper we just published is basically a proof of concept. It's proving the principle that gas bubbles can be moved in liquids in the absence of buoyancy. That's Dr. Katerina Brinkett, assistant professor from the University of Warwick. She's part of the international team behind the study. In the future, what we want to do is separate oxygen bubbles effectively from a solution where the oxygen is basically um, produced in, in, in where, where they're currently produced uh, on the, in the International Space Station. The hope is the new method could help replace the costly and bulky centrifugal system currently used on the ISS. And finally, could billionaire Elon Musk be about to enter the world of football? The Tesla and SpaceX boss has tweeted that he's buying Manchester United, telling his followers, you're welcome. It's unclear at the moment how serious the post was, but shares in Manchester United are publicly traded on the stock market. However, the American Glazer family reportedly retain a controlling share. Still, stranger things have happened, so you never know. you're up to date, come back at 4pm for the Leader podcast from the Evening Standard. We'll be back tomorrow at 1pm. See you then.